I'm just picking my 100 series up from the shop and I just paid this invoice, which is the most expensive repair bill I've ever had. And I have owned some pretty unreliable pieces of but wait a minute, this is a Land Cruiser. This is the most legendarily reliable, the most overbuilt vehicle of all time, right? Of course. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's cheap to own. And that is exactly why I wanted to make this video because for one thing, if you are looking to potentially purchase a 100 series Land Cruiser, you should know what you're getting yourself into and what you might be able to expect from a true cost of ownership standpoint. And two, a few months ago, I made a review video of my LX470 where I called it the greatest adventure vehicle of all time. And I still believe that that is true. But a number of people had asked me to do this video, a video of the true cost of ownership of a 100 series Land Cruiser. And so that is exactly what we're going to do. In this video, I'm going to break down all of the repairs and maintenance, including this invoice that I just paid, which was very expensive and we'll talk about gas mileage and the cost of fuel for these vehicles and at the end of this video i will tally up all of my expenses and then i will probably cry a little bit but it'll be an interesting exercise in seeing how much i've spent to keep this on the road and keep it adventure ready over the three plus years and 30 plus thousand miles that i've owned it so let's do it now before we talk details and specific costs there are a few things then I need to explain because I know that if I don't, people will take to the comments with pitchforks in hand. And let's just start by addressing the elephant in the room. Most of the repairs and maintenance that I have had done on my 100 series Land Cruiser have been done in the shop. Yes, that's right. I take my Land Cruiser to a shop. What did you say? I don't DIY everything. When it comes to larger jobs, frankly, I don't have the space, the tools, or honestly, the time to devote to fixing this myself and dealing with bigger repairs. And so yes, I take it into a shop and I know that many of you are gonna be looking at me and saying, well, you're an idiot. You own a 23 year old truck that you don't take care of the maintenance on yourself. And that's true, but it is what it is. The second thing that I need to stress is that most of the repairs and maintenance that I'm going to reference in this video have been preventative in nature. This has never actually left us stranded anywhere, but we find ourselves oftentimes in very remote areas. It's why we bought this and it's what we use it for. And so for us, it just makes sense to try and tackle potential problems before they become catastrophic and leave us stranded hundreds of miles out in the middle of nowhere. And the third and final thing that I feel like I need to mention before we dive into specifics is that I have no doubt that we have had to do more preventative maintenance and more repairs on this 100 series Land Cruiser than perhaps the average person would. After all, we bought this truck to go off road and it has spent the majority of the past three years and 30,000 miles on rough, unmaintained and unpaved roads. And then when you factor in that this is a 23 year old vehicle with over 250,000 miles on it, and a lot of the parts we've had to replace have been original factory parts that have just worn out from the rough roads that it has been driven on, it kind of makes sense that our repair and maintenance costs may be a little bit higher than average. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's dive into specifics and let's talk numbers. And I wanna start by talking about fuel economy and fuel consumption, because when it comes to a 100 series Land Cruiser, that's not something we can gloss over. These get terrible, terrible fuel economy. And yes, any vehicle that you purchase, you're going to have to account for fuel usage, unless it's electric, I suppose. But that doesn't change the fact that it is a substantial part of the cost of ownership of owning a 100 series Land Cruiser. Now, overall in mixed driving conditions, highway, city, and off-road, we have got a combined 12 miles per gallon. And as of the time of filming this video, the average cost for premium unleaded fuel in the United States is $4.21. And yes, premium unleaded is what is recommended to fill the tank with. Not everyone does it. I don't do it all the time, but at the same time, I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole in this video because that's not the point. Anyway, for us, averaging about 10,000 miles per year, it brings our average total fuel cost to $3,508.33 per year, or $10,525 over the roughly three years we've owned it. Oh yeah, 
she's thirsty. All right, and so now with fuel consumption out of the way, let's talk about probably the most interesting part when it comes to cost of ownership, and probably the reason you're watching this video in the first place, which is the total cost of repairs and maintenance in three plus years of owning this 100 series Land Cruiser. And so what I have done is I've gone through and I pulled out my full stack of all the receipts and service invoices that I have picked up since owning this vehicle. And I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna list them all off. I'm gonna start with the first repairs that I had to do right when I bought the truck. And then I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna list out each individual repair. I'm gonna say what the cost was. And then I'm gonna end with this invoice right here, which is, as I mentioned earlier in this video, the most expensive invoice I've ever had for car maintenance. So. Here goes. All right, and first up on the list of repairs, yes, how could I forget this one? I had to replace the steering rack because the super shady used car dealership that I purchased this from in Northern California tried very hard to cover up the fact that the steering rack was leaking. And so when I got it home to Washington, almost immediately I noticed puddles in the driveway. Turns out it was the steering rack, it had to be replaced. The cost of that replacement, $1,499. They also had to replace an inner tie rod that was $269. And then I wanted to get everything baseline, get it all ready for some trips we had coming up. And so I took it to another shop, uh, the shop that I've used ever since actually, which does a great job. And they uh, had to replace the spark plugs and ignition coils, had the original ignition coils and they were shot. That one was a little pricey as well, $1,150 for that repair. And then I had a period of about a year where I really didn't have to do anything. The truck was doing great. And then if you watch any of our videos, you probably saw the radiator leak that we dealt with when we were in Death Valley. Not the best place in the world to have a radiator leak. But anyway, I had to get a new radiator. This is the one and only time I went to a Lexus dealer because we just needed it done so that we could get on with our trip. The total cost for that new radiator and install was $1,408. All right, next up, once we got home, I had to have a little bit of work done with the brakes. The rear brake pads and rotors had to be replaced. The total cost for that, $580. And while that work was being done, they also discovered that we needed new ball joints for the lower control arms. And so they did that for us as well. The total cost to replace the lower control arm ball joints was $750. Now, this brings me to the invoice that I keep mentioning, the most expensive invoice that I paid, and there is a reason for it, but there were just a number of things that needed to be addressed. We are getting ready to go to Utah for a two week trip. And so I had them go through the entire truck and there were a few items that I just knew we needed to get taken care of. They'd been causing us some problems for a while. And so we had them do all of that. And then of course they found a few additional things while they were in there. So first up on this invoice was the starter. The starter has uh, been having some very intermittent starting issues and it hasn't been too bad, but at the same time, going on this long trip, we just wanted to have that addressed. So we had them replace the starter. The total cost for that, $1,043. And that's mostly due to where the starter is positioned in these trucks. It is a labor intensive job, unfortunately, to change the starter. So there's that. They also went ahead and did the uh, steering rack bushing. So the steering rack that I had installed was a remanufactured unit, which everybody will tell you that you should not do, but I did it anyway. Ah. And so here we are like three years later and I've got issues with my steering rack ball joints. And so the shop was able to replace those ball joints. The cost for that $581. They also took care of the rear upper control arms, which had been failing for a while. $895 to replace those. Uh, had them change the oil and the differential fluid. We do some water crossing, so I just did that for peace of mind. That was $106, no big deal there. And I have saved the most expensive for last, and that is the Brake Booster Assembly, Brake Master Assembly Unit. It is one of the most expensive parts that you can have to replace on 100 series, probably right behind the transmission and the engine. And the cost for the part alone was like $1,700. And believe it or not, they have come down substantially in price. They used to be an even more expensive part. So parts and labor for that was $2,900. So adding everything up, if we total it all up, the total for repairs and maintenance in the three plus years that I have owned this truck comes out to $11,300. 
and $40. Add up the total cost for repairs and maintenance along with the total cost for fuel, and we get a grand total for the total cost of ownership in three plus years of $21,865 for an average annual ownership cost of $7,288. That kind of seems like a lot of money, but is it? Well, here's the way I look at it and the way I justify dumping a bunch of money into a 23-year-old vehicle. A new 2023 4Runner TRD Off-Road, if we were to buy one with zero options and finance it with excellent credit for 60 months and a few thousand dollars down, according to Toyota's website, would give you a monthly payment of $878. Compare that to the $608 that I have averaged per month to own this 100 Series Land Cruiser, which by the way includes the cost of fuel, and things start to look not so bad. Of course, that's not a perfect comparison because what I'm not factoring in is my initial purchase price of this LX470, but at the same time, this truck is not depreciating. In fact, from the time I bought it in 2019 to the present day, it has actually increased in value by about 50%. And I gotta be honest, eh, not mad about it. So anyway, there you have it. Many of you had asked for this video and I hope that I did this topic justice. But if I missed anything and you still have questions, Leave them in a comment below and I will do my very best to answer all of them. And if you're watching this video because you own a 100 series Land Cruiser, I would love to hear what your experience has been like in terms of cost of ownership. So drop a comment below and you can tell me that I'm an idiot for not doing all my own maintenance and I have no idea what I'm talking about. Or you could just like the video, which would be pretty cool too. And if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to check out this one next, where I do a full in-depth review of my 100 series Land Cruiser. Thanks for watching.